All right, so are you ready to dive into some seriously cool tech? Today we're looking at Clone Alpha, and I'm not gonna lie, this humanoid robot is causing a stir. Some are calling it a game changer, others are like, hold up, is this for real? <laughs> We've been digging through a bunch of tech articles, and uh, <laughs> let me tell you, the online forums are on fire, so we're here to figure out, is Clone Alpha the future? Or just a bunch of shiny parts pretending to be human? Well, you know, right from the start, what makes Clone Alpha really interesting is that they're doing things differently than most robots out there. They're all about biomimicry, basically, trying to copy human biology as closely as possible. So it's not just slapping some motors mm -hmm. onto a metal frame. They're going all out, mm -hmm. replicating human anatomy. I mean, mm -hmm. we're talking 206 bone analogs. A system like blood vessels, and get this, artificial muscles that contract using water pressure. That's insane. Yeah, it's pretty mind-blowing. These myofiber artificial muscles, there's something else. Instead of the usual motors and gears, they've created these fibers yeah. that actually contract and expand, just like real muscles. And we're not just talking slow and steady. These things are fast. They can contract 30% in under 50 milliseconds. Yeah. Plus, the power-to-weight ratio is incredible. One kilogram of force ah. from just three grams of material, that means serious power. Yeah without being bulky. Right, and that's key if you want a robot that moves with human-like agility. You need powerful muscles that are also lightweight. This could be a big leap toward robots that can move gracefully and naturally in all sorts of environments. So it's like they're aiming for a robot that can not only do what we do, but do it with the same kind of smoothness and skill. But it's not all about strength and speed, is it? They've also loaded Clone Alpha. A ton of sensors <laughs> to help it understand its surroundings. We're talking depth cameras, mm -hmm. inertial sensors, yeah. and even pressure sensors built right into those muscles. Yeah, all those sensors work together to give clone alpha proprioception, which is basically a sense of its own body position. Think about how you can close your eyes and still touch your nose. That's proprioception. It's crucial for coordinated movement and interacting with the world. So it's not just seeing and feeling the environment, yeah. but also knowing where its own body is. Yeah. In relation to everything else. Yeah. That's a huge step towards robots mm. that can handle complex situations yeah. and manipulate objects with real precision. Absolutely. And on top of all that sensory input, mm. they've got some serious processing power to make sense of it all. NVIDIA Jetson Thor GPUs and Clone Robotics own Cybernet model. It's brain and brawn. It's like they combine the best of human biology yeah. with the computing. Yeah. But the big question is, can they actually make it work? Mm. A robot hand, uh, yeah. you know, 26 degrees of freedom prehensile fingers, an opposable thumb. It sounds incredible in theory, yeah. but can they really pull off that level of dexterity in the real world? That's the challenge, right? We've seen some impressive demos of the individual parts, but putting it all together into a robot that functions smoothly, that moves like a human, that's a whole other story. Think about it. 26 degrees of freedom in the hand alone. That's like 26 separate joints, each one needing to move with incredible precision and coordination. Yeah, it's a huge task and a lot that could go wrong. But if they pull it off, the possibilities are massive. Imagine a robot that can not only grab things, but actually manipulate them with that human-like dexterity. We're talking about stuff that's always been thought of as uniquely human, mm -hmm. you know? Things that need really fine motor control and an understanding of how objects interact with each other. Okay, but uh, hold on a sec. As of today, yeah. December 10th, 2024, there hasn't been a single public demo of a fully working clone. Now, Alfred, we've seen videos of those myofiber muscles, close-ups of the hand, but no complete robot actually doing its thing. Makes yeah. you wonder, are they holding back? Because they're still working out the kinks? Or is this all just hype? Well, that's the big question, isn't it? It's easy to get caught up in the excitement, especially when you see the potential of all these individual pieces, but actually making it all work together, you know, yeah. as a real system that can actually do these complex tasks out in the real world, that's another story. So should we be excited or skeptical? I mean, yeah. on the one hand, yeah. you've got this potentially groundbreaking tech yeah. that could revolutionize everything. But mm -hmm. then there's that little voice saying, maybe it's all too good to be true. I think a bit of skepticism is always healthy, yeah. especially with new technology like this. But you have to admit, the progress in robotics has been amazing. Just a few years ago, the idea of a robot like Clone Alpha that could move and interact like it does, was pure science fiction. And now it seems like we're on the verge of actually making it a reality. Okay, so let's say, just for the sake of argument, that Clone Alpha does deliver on all the promises. What are we talking about? In terms of actual applications, the sources mention helping out mm -hmm. in homes and workplaces. Mm -hmm. But what does that look like in practice? Well, the possibilities are pretty wide open. We could see Clone Alphas 
helping with everything from everyday chores to complex medical procedures. Picture a robot that can assist elderly people with daily tasks, providing companionship and support while also keeping them safe. Or what about dangerous jobs in construction or disaster relief? A robot that can work tirelessly in hazardous conditions without putting human lives at risk. It's pretty wild to think about the potential impact on the job market and the economy. What happens to all those jobs that Clone Alpha could automate? Do we see this massive shift in the workforce? Yeah. Or do we find new ways for humans and robots to work side by side? These are questions we need to start thinking about now. Before this tech becomes widespread, we need to think about retraining programs for workers who might be displaced and developing ethical guidelines for the use of humanoid robots across different industries. One thing I found interesting is that the initial production run is limited to just 279 units. That's a really small number yeah. for something with this much potential. What do you think is going on there? There are a few possibilities. It could be a strategic move to create a sense of exclusivity, you know, mm -hmm. drive up demand. Or maybe they're still working out the kinks in the mm -hmm. manufacturing process and need to start small to make sure the quality is there. Another possibility is they're using this limited release as a real world test, gathering data and feedback to refine the design further before they go into mass production. It's a pretty interesting strategy and definitely adds to the mystery around Clone Alpha. I mean, yeah. you, you don't see companies yeah. intentionally limiting production of something this groundbreaking yeah. every day. Yeah, it's a something about how complex this tech is mm -hmm. and the challenges of bringing something so ambitious to market. Building a few prototypes is one thing, right. but actually scaling up production to meet that potential demand, that's a whole other challenge. But it makes you think yeah. about who's going to have access to this tech mm -hmm. in these early stages. If there are only a few hundred units available, mm -hmm. who gets to decide where they go and how they're used? That's a really important point. We need to be thinking about equitable access mm -hmm. and the possibility that this technology could actually make existing inequalities worse. If these humanoid robots become essential workers, we need to make sure that the benefits are shared yeah. and that no one is left behind. Yeah, it's a lot to consider and really highlights yeah. the bigger societal implications yeah. of this technology. We're not just talking about robots doing cool stuff. Yeah. We're talking about a potential shift in the way we live and work. Exactly, that's what makes this whole conversation so interesting. Clone Alpha is a symbol of yeah. how far robotics has come, but it also makes us think critically about the future we're creating. So to sum it all up, yeah. it seems like Clone Alpha is more than just a cool piece of tech. It's a reflection of our hopes and fears mm. about the future, a challenge to our ideas about what robots can be, and a call to action to have a real conversation about technology's role in our lives. I think that's a great way to put it. It's a story that's still unfolding, and we don't know how it ends. But one thing's for sure, the future of robotics mm. is happening right now. And it's up to us to shape that future in a way that benefits everyone. And on that note, mm -hmm. we'll leave you to think about the possibilities. We've only scratched the surface yeah. of this complex and ever-changing field. Mm -hmm. But hopefully, yeah. this deep dive has given you some things to think about and maybe sparked your curiosity. Definitely check out the links in the show notes for more information. And as always, we'd love to hear your thoughts. The future of robotics is something we all need to be part of. <laughs> <laughs>